How you doing guys? Austin Hall back with Blue Mountain Tactical Concepts. This time we're going to be talking about my personal favorite gun, the shotgun. I've been shooting a shotgun competition for a lot of years. It's my favorite gun to shoot. To me it's the most comfortable, it makes the most sense, but it's also one of the harder guns to shoot. It's also one of the most overlooked guns because people don't underestimate how actually hard it is to shoot one of these properly and keep the gun fed, which is the most important part. These guns like to feed real fast and shoot real quick, but it is very slow to load them. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be first talking about a little bit about grip and shotgun technique, how I'm actually getting my body into the gun. <clears throat> then we're going to jump into loading, both deuce loading and quad loading, show you a little bit about that. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about the little tips and tricks like the match saver or the plus one magnet. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. So first we're going to jump into how I'm actually going to mount and shoot the gun. So as you most likely know, you don't aim a shotgun, you point a shotgun. That being said, the how the gun fits you is gonna be very, very, very important. Most of these guns, you cannot change the comb height or you can't change the length of pull without some work. So the most important thing is where your body lines up on the gun relative to where you put your head. When you bring the gun up to your head, you don't wanna be moving your body. You don't wanna be adjusting up or down, left or right. You don't wanna be adjusting your neck into the cheap piece of the gun, that's gonna change where you're shooting the gun. You wanna be looking through the top of the sights, looking at your targets, and, w and when you know you're looking at the targets, pulling the trigger and hitting exactly what you're aiming at. So, that's why the fit is the most important. I actually forgot one thing, guys. The most important thing we're gonna do right now, I'm as always, I'm gonna double check, make sure my gun is unloaded, which it is. Nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. Gun's completely unloaded and safe. There's no live ammunition anywhere here. You're gonna be seeing me using some of these. They're actually homemade dummy shells that I made for loading because I prefer to load these smooth shells. I'm also gonna be using some of these. These are gonna be high visibility shells that are gonna be going into the action of the gun. So, <clears throat> what we'll start off with when I'm mounting the gun. Same, almost the same as a pistol. I wanna be standing mostly straight up. If I'm shooting in a static position, I'm gonna be bending my knees slightly, leaning forward into the gun, especially with these big 12 gauge guns. They will be kicking in back a little bit which is natural, that's how the gun works. Bending my knees a little bit forward, I want to pivot from my ankles up. I don't want to be moving just the top of my body. I, I don't want to be moving just the top of my body. That way, when I'm pivoting from the ankles up, basically, my feet stay still. I never have to move my feet, but I can get almost a 360 degree arc of motion. I can be moving all of this way, yet my feet stay in the exact same spot. That allows me to lean and pivot so if I need to quickly take off from one position, I'm, I can lean towards it and move forward, or that allows me to absorb more recoil while I'm firing while not moving my feet back and forth. If I'm moving my feet back and forth and I fire at the wrong time, I'm going to push myself off balance, potentially leading to negligent discharge, something bad like that happening. Definitely don't want to do that. So, get a nice, even stance. My feet, I like to have them about a little bit more than shoulder width. Depending on where I'm going to be swinging the gun, if I'm swinging the gun in a 180 degree arc, I'm gonna be aimed right in the middle, or there's some targets over here and some targets over here. I'll pick a spot that's comfortable for me. That way I can get to the targets on the right and the targets on the left. You can see what I just did. When I'm moving, I'm bringing my whole body across and I'm swinging my whole body. I'm not just moving my head over there, over there, moving my entire body, swinging nice and naturally. That way, my my gun never comes off my face. I can move from here all the way to here using the exact same motion. So, what I'm doing with my upper body, keeping it nice and upright, straight, my head up a little bit. I will have to tuck my head down just a little bit to get to the sights of the gun. I can't have my head straight up, but what I can do, keep my head, I'll show you right here, keep my head straight up as I possibly can, bring the gun up, and then just tuck my head down just a little bit to get into the right position. I wanna do that naturally. I don't want to have to put the gun in and fight it and wiggle over here, over there. I want to be able to just bring the gun up and have the gun naturally come up to the same spot every single time. What a lot of people do is they'll take a tiny little mag light and they'll actually screw, put it in to the barrel of the gun. Pick a spot on the wall, maybe 15, 20 feet away, bring the gun up, screw that flashlight so it's got a nice tight beam to it, just bring the gun up, bring the gun up that way you know exactly where that flashlight's pointing is basically where the gun's gonna be shooting. And when you bring the gun up and you have those sights naturally aligned, you can see if you're obviously gonna be hitting that target with the flashlight is exactly where you're pointing the gun. You can also do that, you can swing 
like I would swing along the wall, down to a corner, back up and across with that same flashlight. That allows you to get used to swinging the gun and maintaining that sight on the target. Back and forth, trace a wall, trace a door frame, something like that. That's something that I picked up from a lot of people who shoot sporting clays, trap and skeet and things like that. So once we've gotten used to the grip, just go out and shoot the gun. Go shoot trap, go shoot sporting clays. Anytime you're pulling the trigger on a shotgun, it's gonna get a little bit better. Just get used to how the gun feels when it's recoiling. Get used to how it's gonna act when it's cycling because every single gun is different. Whether it's a gas gun, an inertia gun, a pump gun, no matter what it is. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about gripping and shooting and standing with the gun, let's talk about getting this gun fed, which is the most important part. Most of us are gonna start out with either single loading rounds through the bottom of the gun, which is perfectly fine, or deuce loading the gun. So, as you can see, I do have the bottom of this gun opened up pretty pretty well. Rounded out the handguard a little bit there. I did all this work myself in my garage. Took about two or three hours. Polished up a little bit. This is just to make getting the shells in the gun a little bit easier for myself. That allows me to get those reloads into the gun a little bit faster. All right, the first technique we're gonna be talking about is gonna be the deuce load, which is going to be one of the easier loads. What we'll do is we'll start in a natural firing position I like to bring my gun over my shoulder. There are some people who prefer to flip the gun upside down and load with their weak hand. I prefer to come up, bring the gun over my shoulder, rotate the gun up a little bit, and load from here. Try both of them. I just haven't been able to get my hand naturally down here yet. I'm sure with practice it's something I could get used to, but it just makes more sense to me to bring my gun up over my shoulder. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take my right hand. As I'm moving the gun back, I'm gonna take my right hand, move down to my shell caddy, whatever I'm using. These are Invictus caddies. I'm going to remove two shells. You can see the bottom shell is held in by my pinky and my finger there. The top shell is held in by my thumb and my two other fingers. I'm going to insert the bottom shell into the gun, using that shell to press down the lifter. Then as I rotate my hand down, I'm gonna to begin to push forward. As I'm pushing forward and getting the first tip, the tip of that first shell into the gun, you can see right there, you can see that first shell is already in the gun, I'm going to start moving my hand out of the way, using my thumb to push the second shell in and pass that shell lifter. You heard that grab right there. Right now the shells are both completely in the gun. I'm going to keep moving my thumb forward just to guarantee that they're in the gun, keep going past, and then I can come up and shoot again. Show you that one more time, guys, nice and slow. Come up. Grab two shells, push that first one into the gun, push it past the shell latch, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Move my finger up, then go back nice to that easy firing position, get the sights on target and break that next shot. <clears throat> Do that, keep doing that over and over and over again. Take your shells out of your gun, put them back on your pouch. Do that over and over again. It's super easy. To get used to doing those two shells at once and that allows you to get much much faster at it keep practicing doing that over and over and over again if you don't have the ability to practice loading the shells into the gun for some reason practice grabbing them out of your belt even knowing exactly where the shells are just like having your pistol pouches knowing exactly where those are so you can grab your gun you can grab one of your magazine pouches knowing exactly where these shells are going to be on your belt is very important that way you don't actually have to ever look exactly at your belt. You can saw I just did that. I was looking at the camera. I can look at the gun or I can look at a target and load the gun at the same time. That way I can be training my eyes and seeing exactly what I need to see. Once you've gotten that down, once you've gotten the deuce loads down, you can advance onto what's known as a quad load. <clears throat> Basically, don't get scared by the quad load. A lot of people are scared of this. It's two deuce loads. Instead of grabbing two shells, you're gonna come down and grab four. You can see I'm basically holding all four shells with both with the fingers of all hands, and I'm keeping my thumbs on top, my thumb on top of both shells so they don't go flying everywhere. Once I get that tip of that first set of shells into the gun, same thing, pressing, keeping forward. I'm just gonna trap that second set of shells with my hand to get them out of the way. Once I get that first set of shells into the gun, bring my hand back, get that second set of shells into the gun just like a normal deuce load, bring my hand out of the way, bring back up onto the target. That way, I have more tips, tricks in my arsenal. If I need to load four shells, I can. 
if I need to load two, I can. If I know I'm not going to have enough RAM in my tube, I don't need to grab four shells off my, my belt. I can just grab two. If I just need to grab two slugs or two birdshot or two buckshot or whatever I'm using. Let's set up a belt here. Move these shells over here, and I'll do one more quad load. We'll show that one more time. Come down, grab four cells, shells instead of two. Get that first set of shells into the gun. Got to play with it every once in a while, guys. Get that second set of shells into the gun. Bring up, present to my target, pull the trigger. Hopefully hit that target. Let's get the shells out of the gun. Get them back on my belt here. While we're doing that, we're going to talk about the importance of shooting the gun like a shotgun. Do not shoot this gun like a rifle. This gun is not a rifle. It's not made to shoot like a rifle. If you're shooting slugs, you can treat it kind of like a rifle. But a shotgun isn't, it's not a precision weapon of any means. It, it's an art more to shoot a shotgun. So you don't want to treat this like a rifle. You can shoot this gun very, very quickly. Go look at Keith Garcia. He's one of the best in the business with a shotgun. He loads it and shoots it faster than anyone. And he'll be the first to tell you it's not like shooting a rifle. So do one more quad load here for you guys. Come down, get those shells in the gun, bring the gun back up. Come down, see that little bit of fumble, that's okay. Don't, don't push yourself and try to go too fast and if something gets stuck, jumble and get flustered, you don't want to do that. If you're loading the gun, go nice and easy, nice and easy. Because if you take that extra second, second and a half, two seconds to load the gun nice and smooth, you're gonna be much more advantageous instead of you're trying to rush and jump and you drop three or four shells on the ground every time you load. So definitely keep your keep your time, slow down, especially in a match. When a match, when it matters, it's you're gonna be shaking a little bit more. Maybe you've just been running, you're panting, maybe your hands are a little bit sweaty, you're grabbing these shells, your hands are gonna be moving, you're gonna be bumping up and down, running down the road. Take your time, slow down, take a couple deep breaths while you're loading the gun. Take your time, you're not going, even if it takes an extra second, that's going to be much more advantageous to get those shells in the gun than to speed up or try to speed up and be dumping shells all over the place. So, well, the next thing we're going to talk about is kind of talk about a little bit more about loading the gun with an empty chamber, which is one of the more tricky things to do. We'll take a look at that next. All right, so as you see, I have now locked the chamber of my gun empty. That'll do pretty much any semi-automatic shotgun, modern shotgun, will lock empty on an empty gun. So what we're going to do is this gun has what's called a match saber, which is made specifically for this situation. If I need to get one more round on target that I've missed, or if I need to get this gun up and running again, load more rounds into it, you'll notice I cannot press the shell latch down to load the gun. There are some latch guns where you can depress the shell latch while the bolt is locked to the rear. A lot of them do not. What I can do in this situation, I'll step back a little bit here. In this situation, I can bring my hand up, grab this shell, Grabbing the shell with my two fingers, my thumbs on this side of the gun still, I'm grabbing with my two outside fingers, my two middle fingers are just keeping it against the gun and contained. I'll move the shell out of the, out of the match saber, back, guide it into the receiver, and then move down with my middle finger, send the bolt home. That allows me to then either fire that final round or come down and load the gun again. I'll show that to you one more time, guys. Get the shell back up in here. I'm going to do this full speed now, so boom, 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 I'm out of ammo, but I need one more shell, or I need to go ahead and reload the gun. I'm going to move back, send that bolt home, come down, load, or take that final shot. There's also another way to do that. If your gun is not equipped with a match saver, or if you've already used your match saver, or say you had a slug stage, and now you need a couple of more rounds of birdshot, and this is a slug, what you can do is you can come up for a normal quad load, or a deuce load, I'll do a deuce in this situation, I'm going to drop that first round into the chamber, use the round to press the bolt release, and then send that next one into the magazine tube. We can do that with a quad load as well. What I'm going to do, come up just like a normal load, take this first round right here by my pinky, the one that I'm trying to move back and forth right there, drop that round into the gun, press that, use that other shell to press my slide release, load the one into the gun, load the two into the gun, and now I have four more rounds. I can load up or I can take those new shots. 
That's very advantageous when you're loading the gun. Sometimes I do that on purpose. I can load the gun all the way to division capacity, have an extra round that allows me to go a little bit faster on those stages if I know I'm gonna need an extra round or if I accidentally miss one, take an extra shot, all I have to do is that. Then I'm back up in the fight, allows me to come up and load again. One other trick that you might have seen on the internet from the master himself, Keith, Keith Garcia. I'm gonna go ahead and load the gun up here on the dummy round, what's called the plus one. What he likes to do with this, starting a stage, starting from the low ready, low ready, whatever we're doing, high port, what you can do, you can start with the gun upside down. This way, this is just a little neodymium magnet right there, this is epoxy to my trigger guard. All I'm gonna do is, on the start signal, I can come down, load the round into the gun, and now instead of having nine in the gun like I normally would, starting at division capacity, I have 10 in the gun. That allows me, with my match saver, to have 11. If I'm shooting 10 targets and I have 11 rounds, I can go a little bit faster. If I can hit all those targets, great. If not, I have an extra. So I can show you that one more time. Flip the gun over, grab the shell off the magnet, and press it forward, or... That one didn't stick, so make sure, your, uh, make sure your rounds stick here, guys. Or you can come up over your shoulder, dump one into the gun, then shoot again. Do that one more time up over the shoulder, shooting, come up, get those shells into the gun, and then fire off. All right, so we've gone over a little bit about how to shoot the gun, <clears throat> a little bit about loading, and a few tips and techniques to get those shells into the gun and get the run back up running much faster. What I want to talk about now, something I like to end a lot of my videos with, is a little bit of technique and a little bit of tricks that a lot of people learn and don't learn. Most important thing with a shotgun is knowing exactly what type of ammunition it likes. My gun loves to feed Winchester AA, but it does not like to feed light Winchester AA. I made that mistake. I bought five boxes of Winchester AA, and the guy behind the counter accidentally sent me, sold me one that were low recoil. I didn't notice that. That is something that I noticed as soon as I pulled the trigger and the gun didn't cycle. So I learned that the hard way. Now I need to double check all of my shells and make sure they are going as fast as they need to be to cycle the action of this gun. Every gun's gonna be different, no matter what it is. If there's an inertia gun, like a Benelli or a Stoger, an FN, which is gas operated, a Remington Versamax, a JM930, whatever you're using, you need to know exactly what kind of shells it likes, what kind of shells it doesn't like, especially for slugs. This gun will not feed certain types of slugs, Unfortunately, some of those are the Fiocchi low recoil ones, which are awesome to shoot, and they're super accurate out of this gun, but they won't cycle. So I'm gonna have to use something of the standard variety. That is okay. I just have to know that, and I have to make sure that this gun will cycle with what I feed it, especially in a situation, like I said the other day, where I'm flying to a match, I don't have the ability to fly out 250 rounds of birdshot and a 25 rounds of slugs that I know are gonna feed out of this gun. I might have to go to a situation where I'm going to be going to a Walmart or some other sporting goods store at 10 o'clock at night when I land to go get a bunch of birdshot and buckshot and slugs for this gun. I have to know that that doesn't work, this doesn't work, but this does and this will work and I need to know where those slugs are going to hit. At 50, 75, even 100 yards, I've taken 100 yard slug shots. If you're guessing where those slugs are going to go, you're at a major disadvantage. So go out, even if it's just sitting down on a bench like this would be, go out Take your time, know where those slugs are gonna hit, even if that means modifying your gun. The FN is really cool because it comes with a rear, basically a Ruger style flip down rear sight that allows me, if I need it to, flip that up. That allows me to shoot this kind of like a rifle with those slug shots. If I don't need it, I just flip it down. A lot of times the Stogers and the Benelli's are gonna have a triangle shaped front sight that allows you to have a little bit better of a point of aim to know where those slugs are gonna go. If you don't take it, take three or four or five different types of slugs, knowing knowing that you have to go and fire each one of them. Slugs aren't usually a lot of fun to shoot, but you need to know exactly where they're gonna hit, especially if you're gonna be shooting a match like Rocky Mountain 3-Gun or some of the other bigger natural terrain matches, you're gonna be shooting 100, 125 yard slug shots. You need to know exactly where those slugs are gonna hit. So one of my biggest important things, the next important thing on this, especially with the shotgun, is keep this thing clean and maintained. I, like I said, I'm a very, very, very big fan of my shotguns. I used to shoot a lot of break open guns when I would shoot trap. You don't have to clean those things ever because you're doing all the work. All the gun has to do is fire. This, the gun is literally doing all the work. So I know 250, 300 rounds, I'm going to take this gun all the way apart, 
take a nice dry cloth, scrape off all the carbon, especially off this gas tube up here where the port is moving back and forth to get the piston to run. Take all the springs out, take the magazine tube spring out. That's another big one. Make sure, especially if you're doing a lot of loading practice, make sure that magazine tube is nice and tight. We hear a lot of people talk about how long you want the magazine tube out. Your gun maybe 10 inches out past the tube, 12 inches out past the tube. A lot of that is what happens, what has your gun had worked on. Does it have a, a lightened shell latch? Then you probably don't need a long of the spring. If it's a stock gun, like this one is, I haven't done anything to the shell latch because it really doesn't need it. I don't need that much spring, but sometimes a lot of the verse maxes, they need a longer spring so they can get that cycling pressure on those shells to get the gun to run. Once again, that's all personal. That all has to do with your gun. You need to shoot your gun to the 100 rounds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds before you can trust it, especially in competition. Best thing about these is usually we don't rely on semi-automatic mag, you know, long 12 round magazine tube fed shotguns for defense, defensive situations. So usually you're not gonna have to worry about that. But in competition, you wanna know exactly what this gun is gonna do and what it's not gonna do. Treat it how it is, keep these guns up and running. They can be some of the most fun to shoot. They can be some of the most fun to use. They can be some of the most annoying to try to keep running. So definitely know your gun, know yourself, know your shells, keep the guns up and running and you're gonna have a great time. All right, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping you're enjoying these videos. Like I said before, if you have any comments, concerns, topics for next one you want me to talk about, even if it's going back into the shotgun, going back into the pistol, talking about any of the gear I'm using, the belts, the guns, the ammunition, anything like that, optics or anything like that, let me know. Send me a message. Find me on Instagram at Adaptive Combat Kinetics. Kind of long one, Adaptive Combat Kinetics, if you find me on there. If you have any comments or questions about any of my older videos, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.